Hey guys, so this is a part of the old format of videos. So a lot of what you're seeing here today is not what you wanna see. Uh, I know that you guys are really keen on getting more, um, more video of like close up stuff. And I'm totally cool with doing that. But I shot a lot of video before, um, before I got that message. So I'm doing current stuff with a new format and uh, I hope to make it much more viewable and more useful because I agree that this is not really useful. Uh, so right here in the video, uh, I'm gonna be working on fabricating some pieces and parts that actually go on the ribs uh, of the wing spar. So that's pretty cool. And <clears throat> here I'm, uh, you can see I'm munching down on some Pringles while I reread the instructions over and over and over again. Uh, and finding pieces and parts. And, and I'm even checking right here, I'm checking online to try to figure out what the heck part is this talking about? And, and I go back and forth to the packing slip. And you'll do this a lot. You'll get the packing slip and you'll, it will say, you know, you need part L1055L, whatever. And you have to go find it. And sometimes it, it, it's, if you don't have a real good uh, organization technique, you'll have a tough time finding them. Uh, or, uh, as the case here, they'll send you a part, but then that part number is actually in, listed in the packing list as a replacement part, or it's not mentioned at all. Uh, and you just kind of have to intuit what it is. And so I'm going to talk to that here. So for the second time, I've run into a situation where the plans call for a specific part, that I don't have. The reason I don't have it is because they sent some other part that replaces that part, but quite often there's no indication of it at all. Um, in this case, on 14-2, step three says that I'm supposed to cut a piece of 0 0.036 2024 T3 ALCAD to, and, and mark the alignment of lines and the dimension, blah, 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 blah. That's this, it's just a simple piece of metal. But I don't have the 0 0.063 2024 T3 ALCAD. What they sent was an AS3 063 by 5 8 by 13 and a half. There's no markings other than that on here. And this, their documentation doesn't mention this at all. Moreover, you're making a spacer uh, W1029D is what this part will be called once you finalize it. But again, that's not mentioned anywhere that this is for 1029D. It's not the first time that's happened. So sometimes you kind of have to intuit which piece they want you to use to make what part. That kind of speaks of a little bit of a gap between um, the part department and the plan department. I think they need to maybe put their heads back together and fix things like that. Like I said, that's not the first time this has happened. I'm all for replacing parts, but they need to update the plans too to reflect the replacement. Otherwise, it just gets really confusing. So, thought I'd make you aware. So for the rest of this video, uh, what I'm gonna be working on is this. This is the piece that I'm working on, or, or not for all of the video, but for a lot of the video. This is what I'm gonna be working on. It's just a simple bracket that I think is for the flaps. I don't have the plans in front of me right now, so I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what it's for. And you can see it's kind of, there's a kind of a space, a, a gap between the top and the bottom piece, and that's where that piece of metal that I had just described goes. It kind of acts as a spacer uh, along the angle bracket on the, on the inside and a perpendicular piece along the top. And you can see on there that uh, I also went through and I alternated the rivets, uh, top and bottom. I don't know if that's going to add any strength or not. In fact, I mean, the shop head on rivets is usually pretty solid. So I don't know if alternating them makes any difference at all. I just thought I'd give it a try and see, see what I came up with. Um, your mileage may vary. Here I'm using my Ryobi uh, bandsaw and my Ryobi grinder. Uh, I gotta get a new blade for my bandsaw because at this point that blade's really dull and I'm just kind of burning my way through the aluminum. Uh, the aluminum gets hot, by the way, as aluminum is wont to do. And on the grinder, so normally when you buy a grinder, it comes with two, uh, that's a six inch grinder, so it comes with two different stone wheels. One, I guess normal grit and then one coarse grit. I mean, they're both stone, so I really can't tell the difference all that much. I replaced both of those with the exact same uh, six inch wheel, sc uh, Scotch-Brite wheels, 
and I took the housing off the right side so that uh, sometimes you need to be able to move things around and maneuver them and the housing really gets in the way because the housing only gives you a little, kind of a little gap. Um, now the housing is handy because that's where the ledge is. So if you need a, like a flat edge, that's really useful. But at other times you need to be able to move the part around and having a housing there gets in the way. So I pulled that off. I would like to see if they have something like a like a, a, a scotch bright ball, uh, like a two or three or maybe four inch ball that you could have far enough out off the, the grinder itself so you can get pieces over there and really ream around and move parts around on it. Uh, that would be amazingly helpful because there are times when you've got uh, bits and pieces that you have to get inside of or uh, some of the like the, the cutout holes, the, the lightning holes, you need to be able to get in on those and, and ream them out. And there's just no good way to do that. So uh, I don't know if they have such a thing. I'll have to look. That would be really useful. But the, the, a good chunk of this video is about, excuse me, is about me going through and finding all the pieces and parts. Like here I pulled that box uh, box over from the table. That box has um, a bunch of odds and end bags that you know came with the the uh, kit. Uh, and and specifically, I think I was looking for the uh, the uh, bearing. Couldn't think of the word. Uh, looking for the bearing that goes between the two pieces. And here you see I'm doing some test fits on uh, the main rib, as well as using the crimper to uh, make sure that that rib lies flat. Uh, I do this on all the ribs. Uh, you just kind of have to, to, to do a little bit just to make sure it lies flat. Uh, I don't show it on the rest of the ribs. So, and again, I, I've heard you. I know you guys want me to do some zoom in and a little closer and explain this stuff a little more carefully. And I will do that going forward, or I started doing that going forward. I've just got a bunch of video to show you uh, where I've not done that. So. <laughs> Hurry. Uh, and here, let's see. Here, yeah, here I'm doing more test fitting on the piece to make sure it all will work. Not putting any rivets in yet. I've just got the piece to put together to make sure that this is exactly how I want to do it. Again, in the interest of not screwing up, I'm reading the instructions, doing test fits, reading the instructions, doing test fits before I do any cutting. On this particular thing, in order to get the test fit to work correctly, I had to go uh, sand just, uh, just a, just a, tiny, tiny bit off of either end of that piece that I'm mounting in there. And you saw me use a really long drill bit to do the first pilot hole uh, through the two pieces and through that angle aluminum in order to make sure I did the, I actually did one on either end. So you have two holes on either end, you Clico those, and then you, you can pull the long bit off because that long bit, you don't want to bend it and it's kind of expensive. So you use your short bit to do the rest of them. So once you have two of them lined up, you then can match drill all the rest of them and uh, the world is a better place. So, like I said, there's a lot of doing this piece, going back and forth and doing all the things to get this, this one rib set. Thankfully, all the rest of the ribs are nowhere near uh, as arduous as this one. You do have to make uh, a couple other ribs with a big thick piece of metal, and I think I show that here soon. Uh, that is, again, part of, I think, the flaps. Uh, and that's that thick piece of metal right there. You see me, I'm mounting it on there. Uh, and a lot of just match drilling. There's like 30 holes per those. And you just got to go through and match drill all of them. And it's, it's, uh, it's no big deal. So, and of course, every once in a while, I got to check into work. That's what I'm doing there. Because, you know, I, uh, I work remotely, which is really handy. And I think this was like 6 or 7 o'clock at night. But because my company is in central time, uh, it's always an hour earlier, and some of my guys work really late. They work too late, so, but hey, I guess that's champagne problem, right? Um, so here I am going through and pulling the rest of the ribs. So there's a lot of left-right ribs, and um, the left-right rib doesn't mean all the left ribs go on the left spar and all the right ribs go on the right spar. No. Uh, in fact, it's an even mix of left-right ribs on the left spar. And... I don't know why they do that. I don't know why they have the the ribs because they're just they're just changing the directions of the rib, uh, where the you know which side has the flange on it, for strength I guess. Uh, people smarter than me have come to the conclusion that that's the right way to do it. So that's the way they did it. And by the end of this video, you will get to see that. Uh, you'll actually get to see me putting all the ribs on uh, the spar, and that'll be cool. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. A lot of running back and forth. This was a, 
This was actually a long day, all things considered. This was this was like four or five hours, I think. It's amazing how little you can get done in four or five hours. I mean, you'd think you'd have a lot. You'd you'd come away with having solved all the world's problems, right? Made the better mousetrap. And you stand back after four or five hours, and you're like, really, that's it? That's all I did? Hmm, all right. Uh, you know, how to eat an elephant, one bite at a time. Uh, so here I am going through, and I'm, I'm discovering that whole left-right rib thing right here. Where I'm like, oh, okay, this is a left rib. I initially thought all left ribs, all for the left spar. All right ribs, all for the right spar. That's incorrect. Uh, and you also have to cut two ribs. So one of the rib, and again, I don't have video of this, but one of the rib you have to cut uh, just a piece off so that when it slides into the spar itself, it matches up uh, in such a way that it does not uh, sit on top of one of the nut plates that's in there. Uh, real simple. You, as soon as you put it in there, you go, okay, I see what you have to do. Real easy. And one of the other ones you have to you have to cut off the very tip of it um, because it you know it's got a, it's got a, a tapered shape and you and that flange that curves around you you got to cut part of that flange entirely off on the very far end of one and I don't know why um, I'm haven't gotten that far in my reading well I've read it I, I vaguely remember it had something to do with the uh, the uh, fairing. But uh, I've forgotten. I've read it, but I've forgotten. I've kind of, I kind of thumbed past it real quick. So here I am. I'm, I, I realize that, you know what? I want to keep the spar in the same direction as the plans so that I can definitely know exactly what I'm looking at so that I can look at the plans and look at the spar and everything's lined up exactly. So I needed to lift it up and put the spar on the other side of the table. And so that's what I did here is I moved it around to the other side of the table and then moved the table around. Having wheels on that table is handy. Building yourself a nice rolling table is convenient. I highly suggest it. And then it's about putting the, putting the ribs on. So here we are putting the ribs on. Beer. I went back and forth a number of times. So there's like 15 ribs here, right? And I, I, I went through and made sure this one and that one, this one, that one. So the, the four ribs that you see on there now are the four that are actually some way modified. The rest of the ribs, with the exception of the very far end, sorry, the five ribs that are on there now are the ones that are modified. The rest, and then the one rib that has the bracket on it, I, that's the last one I put on. Then I go through and I actually add all the rest of them. And I keep checking the plans to make sure it's a left rib, right rib, left rib, right rib. And uh, eventually you'll have to, after drilling those, you'll pull them all off. And I found a real easy way to keep track of which or which is a hole down in the very bottom. There's a hole that runs through the very bottom of all of them. And once you figure out that hole, and you will eventually have to widen that hole in two videos from now, I think. Uh, that's where your pitot tube uh, wires go. But uh, once you realize that there's that hole running through the whole thing, making knowing whether it's a left or right rib is easy, and you'll you'll immediately go, oh, that that rib's on backwards. And if you sit down and you look along the ribs, you'll see that it's it's up a little bit. So it, it's not a big deal. It's it's an, it's easy to see if you do it wrong. Um, but here you go, and you can see the the piece that's towards the camera, the rib that's towards the camera. That's that's the wing root. The, what's farthest away from the camera is way out of the tip. And you saw I just went through and, you know, tapped each one and made sure it was right. So, awesome! It's, it's, look, look, it looks like a wing. Okay, not really, but it looks like a spar with ribs on it. Uh, one thing I wanted to do here is I realized that I'm going to need to be able to roll that rib around while I work on it, and, you know, especially for all the match drillings which are coming. And so, uh, I wanted to do something much, much more grandiose than what I've done here, but basically I just clamped down some uh, one by twos or two by twos or whatever, yeah, two, uh, and uh, then just just laid it over. Works perfectly, you know. Uh, simple is good. I probably should cut them off because there's like four feet of board sticking out on either side, uh, or or put it maybe maybe uh, right even across both sides. But for now, this works. There's no need to change. Uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then it's a matter of just going through and match drilling all the holes. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm match drilling the number, I think it was a number 21 drill bit or 12, number 12 drill bit. I forget which, it's a bigger drill bit. Through the spar doubler. Uh, and then I go through and I do the rest of them tomorrow. Here I'm cleaning up the shop, getting ready to go home. And I've got a lot more videos coming, guys, I promise. Thanks.